Last winter, temperatures at night dropped to lows of minus 18 degrees centigrade, colder than Moscow. Over 5,000 men and women sleep on the streets of London throughout the year, whatever the weather. Can you imagine what it feels like to sleep rough? Tonight, over 150 local volunteers are going to find out as West London Church's Homeless Concern prepares for its biggest ever fundraising event, a sponsored sleepout. I'm going to take a sleeping bag and I'm going to put it in a waterproof bivy bag. Um, and I'm going to take this uh, cardboard box to keep me from getting cold. I thought it would be a good experience for me to see what it was like to live like that just one night. You know, it's the old idea if you walk a man in someone else's shoes then you stand the chance of understanding a little bit of what they're going through. Their ambitious aim is to raise over £100,000 so they can double the number of homeless guests that can be accommodated this winter. After the event, they will be more aware of the uh, situation that homeless people are facing and uh, how hard it is to actually sweep the craft of the London streets. Tonight's a real first for us, uh, an experiment in fundraising in the open air. It's a great cause, as all these people prove are prepared to sleep out on a Friday night in October. Uh, it just shows how important people realise this work is and how scandalous homelessness is in our city in the 21st century. I'm nervous that I won't sleep at all, that I spend the whole night just sort of uh, awake. My name's Anne Cowley, I'm a vicar in West London in Shepherd's Bush. I work with a, a friend and he runs marathons and there's no way I'm going to run a marathon. I thought this might be within my capability zone. All I had to do was lie down and get curled. How did these work? I've got no idea. It said in the run-up to the night, I, I think I was concerned if it was cold and raining, it wouldn't be any fun at all. And then on the other hand, you think, well, you can't really choose if you're hopeless, so maybe it would be better for all if it was cold and raining. But as it turns out, it's a warm Indian summer-like night, and I think everyone is very relieved, and there's a lovely atmosphere here. There must be a good 150 people here actually, which is pretty cool. Most people have said they were going to come and come. There's still quite a lot of people arriving and registering, so I think we're going to hit our tag. I'm Stuart Wilson, I'm the parish priest, and I'm with a group of my Christians from St Mary's Cadogan Street. I think what's special about it for me is that I know so many of the people here from other churches are getting together to just to try and make an impact. To, to, we care about the world, we aren't just bothered about what happens in our churches. A more godly lot you couldn't imagine. I just had a photograph with a dozen clergy in it and yeah. all of them have brought people from their congregation with them. I know we've got two or three different schools. We've got groups of teachers and staff. We've got people who volunteer from the shelters. A huge mixture of people. We've even got ex-homeless people who are here serving tea and coffee. It's been a big event. People just want to come and join in. And I think those who have been homeless want to give something back. And they see this as a great opportunity really to be as a bit of solidarity. Paul was unable to work and lost his flat after he damaged his foot in an accident. He was homeless for three months until he found temporary accommodation. I used to go to Chelsea for food and I didn't want to beg. I didn't beg for food or money or nothing. So I got a key worker at West London homeless called Neil. And Neil came to Westminster Council with me, put my case across and now I'm on the council waiting list for uh, a place, but I still do voluntary work all the time for charity. I paint and cook dinners or wash up, I don't care as long as I'm doing something active. So that's really sorry for the people that are. And, um, I do really. Uh, I know some people they make wrong choices in life, but they, some people don't get direction. It's not that's the way they want to be, there's a reason behind everybody being homeless. Tibby has only recently become homeless following a relationship breakdown and he's struggling to come to terms with it. I've got some friends in the day centre and 
I heard from them that they're doing this and I thought I'd sleep here with them. So I won't be alone. But I usually sleep in the street. Close the end. And then I just get in. Homeless people have to uh, sleep with one eye open and one ear open because they never know what's going to happen. So I spoke to a lot of homeless people in my time and they say there are people who set fire to them, the bottom end of a sleeping bag, and if you're lucky you get out in time or you get weed on or just, just roughed up just because they think it's funny to do that to a homeless person. <laughs> I can speak. <laughs> I was surrounded by some of the best snorers in town, I can say that. It wasn't me. It might have been me. No, it does make you realise, I mean, we had a warm night, didn't we? And uh, this winter it's not going to be quite so warm. I was quite uh, comfortable. <laughs> I've got cramp in my leg. The last five did. I forgot how hard it was. Oh. It goes without saying that homeless people are not usually greeted with hot tea and bacon butties in the morning. I would not want you to do it every day. Not bad until the aeroplane started about sort of 4.30 <laughs> in the morning, but uh, not brilliant. But... Noisy and bright and a bit scary. Even with all these people here and the security, you were conscious that, you know, people are rough on the streets. It's now quarter to six and we've got to move because they're coming to clear the square ready for the day ahead. I'm glad we did it. It was in a good cause. I'm really happy about that. One night a year, it's absolutely fine. But come another couple of months, I wouldn't want to be doing this. We realise it's pretty tough having to do this night after night. It must really weigh you down after a while. The difference is that you know it's a jolly and you're doing it with friends and so on. But for other people, there's the underlying sense of despair and desperation. They don't know necessarily where the next meal is going to come from, and they don't know that it's not going to go on forever and ever and ever. And so I think that's why organisations like the West London Homeless Concern are so important, because they help people to put an end to it. The West London Homeless is brilliant. I owe them my gratitude for what they've done. They do a lot for more than anywhere I've seen in London, and I really mean that. For very pleased, very happy. I think very proud of everybody that's been involved. It was a brilliant idea and it's worked really well. Thank you.